I'm James from Kanga Motorsports and today we're going to go over the Rebello Racing 3 litre kit for a Datsun engine build. So if you've been following along with the Datsun engine build videos, you've probably seen the work we've done to the block and the work we're starting to get done on the head. So as part of the build, we went to Rebello Racing, they did a lot of the machining work for us and the work that we needed to get done on the cylinder head, setting up the valves and stuff. So I thought what we'd do today is we'd walk you through the Rebello Racing kit and we'd go through some of the parts that we have getting ready for the assembly and the install. So first up, the most obvious is the Kometic uh, multi-layer gasket. Uh, this would go between the head and the block. We used an older version of this um, that was all tore up when we were doing the cylinder head work just to mark out which what the bore sizes were when doing the combustion chamber polishing you've probably seen and then also to protect the deck surface uh, when we were working on the porting of the car so that's first thing up we also got their billet custom spray bar for the cam so it has a bunch of holes along the length of this bar. It bolts up to the cam towers and then it sprays the cam as it's rotating. So the cam also has an internally oiled holes. So oil feed goes through both the cam and then out to the spray bar, which also uh, coats the lobes with oil while it's operating. Next up for the cam towers, we had to have both the top and bottom surfaces faced and so when we did that we needed some cam tower shims so we'll be installing these when we put the new cam towers back into the head uh, these are about thirty thousandths and so we'll give these a clean up and just make sure there's no burrs before we install them uh, next up you probably see a bunch of these parts down here so we have a bronze drive that will go on our crankshaft on the nose and this will drive both the distributor and the oil pump and we use the bronze one because we potentially will be tracking this car as well as just street driving and it's supposed to stand up better to, to high RPM track use so thanks for that one. Here we have a variety of bushings and plugs that go along with the engine block um, I think if you've seen an earlier video we showed how we had uh, threaded some of the galley plugs for the oil passages so we're using these threaded inserts here to seal those up and that will make them easier to service in the future next up also for the head we have new lash pads these will go on the top of the keepers and the rockers basically rub against those we have to do a white pan check but here's some good starting sizes for the intake and the exhaust uh, with our cam set up and having to have cut the, the head a little bit and then put the shims in. We're looking at a 160 thousandths for the intake and 175 thousandths for the exhaust. So we'll be getting to that. Next up we have these very nice uh, new, these are new OEM exhaust valves in here. We have a full set, all cut and custom cut matched to the head. And then we also have these larger Supertech custom cut um, intake valves and you'll see here they neck down here to uh, reduce the thickness of the valve stem at the port flow area so we've had all these cut they're numbered and then those will be numbered and matched to the cylinders as we go forward we'll, when we assemble the head we'll put all of these together put the lash pads in, do some white pattern checks with the, with the camshaft and then make sure everything's good to go. We also need to do a check to make sure that there's no um, valve to piston interference uh, and we want to make sure we have enough clearance there when we're timing the motor. So get started on those. Next up we have springs. So we have new outer springs. We'll use the standard stock Nissan inner springs, the hats and the keepers from the, our previous head. 
Uh, we'll pick the best sets of those from the set of heads we have. And then we have these hardened spring seat washers that we'll use. Uh, these outer springs basically sit on those hardened washers um, and, and that will give us the right geometry and also the right hardness on the heads of these springs don't end up digging into the original aluminum spring seats. So, uh, good full set of those going forward. We also got a set of uh, valve stem seals, so we'll install those. Uh, the important thing when installing these is to make sure that you don't like catch them or scratch them uh, as that can cause oil and to drip down through the valves um, into the head and then you'll get smoke that you commonly see. Um, so we have a variety of these. We also have to clean up the old seats and make sure we removed any of the old remnants of the old valve seals. Um, then next up we've got a set of rod bearings. So these are the new smaller size ground down the cam to give us more of a stroke. And so these are the size of the rod bearings. So what you'll see us do is we'll go through and we'll size these bearings, measure them up, match the pairs to the rod sizes and give us the clearance that we need um, going forward. Then we have a full set of new main bearings here. And so these set of main bearings, same thing. We'll go through, we'll measure these, size them up, match them to the different mains and the crankshaft to make sure we have enough clearance. And then we will go through when we're assembling the motor and just double check things. So full set of rod bearings, full set of uh, main bearings. So next up we have the Eagle rods. So these are forged H-beam rods from Eagle, custom made for Rebello. They're a very nice piece of work, a uh, full set of six. And so you can see here the quality of the rods. So what we'll do is we'll go through and we will weigh these rods and then we will balance both the small end and the big end. We will also check and clean them up and make sure that the clearances are what we need them to be and combined with the rod bearings, we will measure the, the sizes and then we will match those to the various sizes on the uh, crankshaft, making sure we have enough oil clearance. And so what we do here is we label our parts A through F, um, and then once we've done all our measurements and our weights, we'll go through and we will assign the letter to the cylinder. And so we'll, we'll remove the A's and we'll either give them a one or a five or whichever cylinder they end up being better suited to. Uh, what I found is if I just start numbering from the start, then I'll forget and I'll come through and I'll assume that, that number one is assigned to cylinder number one, um, but that may not be the case and it may not give you the best clearance going forward. Um, so, nice piece of kit. Um, glad to have these. These again have the smaller size big end here that is matched to the ground down crank that will give us more stroke uh, for the 3 liter engine build. So. And then next up, if I can close that box, uh, we have the JE Pistons. These are again custom built piece for Rebello Racing. Um, and they come in uh, two varieties of course. Um, the Daxon cylinders have uh, intake and exhaust on the same side of the head. And so correspondingly, various cylinders will either have an exhaust valve intake valve or an intake valve exhaust valve. And so we have these nice uh, forged set of pistons. Uh, what we will go through is we will go through and we will weigh these, measure the clearances, and then match them to the cylinder bores in the engine block and assign those numbers. So again, we go through, put the A through F on them, and then later on we'll go through and we'll clean those up and we'll put the numbers on them. So we have a, three of the exhaust intake ones and then three more of the intake exhaust ones. And so you just have to match those as best you can to the cylinder head to make sure they give you the correct gear clearance. Along with those, we have four sets of uh, rings. So they come with a top ring um, the second ring and of course the oil scraper rings so full set very nice set of rings 
So what we'll do in coming videos is we'll go through and we will match these to the different cylinder bores and then we will uh, custom set our ring gaps. So this set of rings, they come slightly oversized and so then you can grind them down to your application um, to match your ring set. Uh, along with the pistons, we of course have the pins that connect the pistons to the rods. And so these, again, we've labeled them A through F and we will weigh them. And these pins will go into the pistons um, and they have the little locks that will set in. Um, so we have those little locking rings that will go in and that will keep the piston floating. Um, so when we connect the piston pin, put the rings in, uh, that locks it in place and this piston pin will be floating with the piston and the, and the rod. So we have the last piece of the uh, Rebello kit and that is the camshaft that we had reground. Um, this camshaft was ground for street use and like track use so it's not a race camshaft but it does have improved performance. Um, the lobes have been modified um, to match what we were looking for. I think Rebello calls this a 63DI. Um, we'll go through and check each of the white patterns, um, make sure the geometry is right once we're, we have this installed, and just make sure everything's working as expected. Uh, Rebello went, did go through it and set up uh, one of the white patterns for us just to get the initial numbers on the latch pads just to make sure we're in the ballpark uh, from a sizing perspective. Um, but looking forward to getting this thing in, looking forward to hearing how it sounds in the car. Um, so in general, that's a quick overview of all the pieces and parts that we got from the three liter Rebello kit. Now we have to go through and weigh everything, size everything, and then match them to the engine and block and the cylinder head and then go through and check all the geometries as we're going forward. So a fair bit of work to do but I'm looking forward to getting this thing assembled. Um, some really nice pieces here. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions leave a comment below or send us an email. Uh, we look forward to talking to you and we'll see you on the next video.